Yeah, don't worry about it right now. I'll, I'll tell you later in a moment. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about it. Yes, this will be available afterwards. Yeah, it's it's on the same, um, you know, URL, so you can go. If you if you can't remember the URL, no big deal. Just do a EMC code, and search for o OpenStack Summit or something like that, or Open 2015 something. Or don't even do that. EMC code GitHub, and then you can find the repositories. Okay. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Have you installed that too? Yeah. All right, perfect. So for those of you who are walking late, just do a git clone of this. And if you already did the git clone, you listen to the, I mean, you followed the instructions, do a git pull. Just do a git pull so that you update the latest, you know. So you all set? All right. 14%? Which one is this? All right, if anybody has having a problem, you know, we have a few USBs. So if, if you want to not use the network. You're able to do it, right? Yeah. Okay. And did you set up the, this thing too? Alias. No. That's in the instruction, uh, first instruction, EX something. Very fast. I'll, I'll let everybody know about that. Yeah, just yeah, but you may have to substitute the path that's appropriate for you. Yeah. So those of you who are walking late, uh, if you've already Git cloned this, you're fine. But otherwise, you know, just do a uh, Git clone of this, and if you already Git cloned, just do a Git pull, just to be safe. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, we yeah. just get people in, yeah. Yeah, so that at least they have the Git CLI. There are already people who have installed it and all that. So that's cool. They, they neglected to give us water and food. Yeah, yeah. We can ask them. Come on in. There's plenty of space. If any of you don't have a laptop, try to find somebody who has a laptop and kind of, you know, work with them because you know this is going to be. You're going to be driving it after 15 minutes. You know we're going to do, drive it for the first 15 minutes. After that, it's going to be entirely up to you. Okay? It's not going to be tremendously useful if you don't have a laptop. Okay? Let me give you a warning right up up front. Come on in. Anybody having problems with Git pull, Git clone, anything like that? So for those of you who walked in late, just do a Git clone of this particular URL. And if you already Git clone, just do a Git pull just to be sure, all right? Yeah. Or if, you, if you're wondering what prerequisites are required, you know, you can just go to this URL on your browser. Okay, and, and it'll tell you what, what are the requirements. You have to install the Git client, and you have to install the Staccato client, okay? Yeah, and we, we did send out the instructions yesterday. I don't know if anybody got it. Nobody got it? You got it? Yeah, yeah, some people got it, yeah. All right. I know, I know, yeah. Let's come first, sir, man. How many of you used Git before? So you know we don't have to. Okay, so all of you have used Git before. So more or less. Yeah. No, you just you can just do a Git clone and you'll be fine. You did a Git clone, right? Maybe it's uh, wrong user ID. Maybe. Good, you know, can't ask him. Sorry, mm -hmm. can't see. HTTP MC code OS. Uh, oh, you are missing a M. S U M I T. S U M M I T. Got that? Yeah. So those of you who walked in late, just do a Git clone of this. Okay. And if you already done a Git clone, listen to the instructions and all that. Just do a Git pull. Okay. Oh. oh. Yes, jiggle that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, no, 
That's why I said John will be all right. That's why I said we'll be all right, you know. Yeah. Especially if there are some people who are pair, pairing, you know, pairing off and all that. Anybody does not have a laptop here? Anybody has a Windows laptop here? Okay, you may be a problem child, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll try to help you. Yeah, no, so there may be some slight differences, but we can figure it out. Then. Sure. Not really, but I can figure it out, hopefully. do a git clone of this okay and if you already did a git clone about 10 minutes ago just do a git pull just to be safe okay git pull will basically refresh the repository sorry you know forget that why are you doing that I don't know. I'll Forget that. You're not ready for that. You're not given that. <laughs> okay, so just do this. GitHub. I cloned it already. You, you cloned it? Then you're all set. Okay. That's all you need to do. Okay? So yeah, you're all set. Water yeah. You yeah, don't worry about it right now. So I'll, I'll remove it if you want. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should remove it. Yeah, we, we will give you the user ID and password in a bit. We didn't want everybody to kind of hit, hit it. I'll remove this, John, okay? Because people are getting confused with this. CF target. Well, that's true, but it's not going to work anyway. I don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. Git, just do a git pull if you're already done a git clone. Git space pull. You all set? Are you active state or no? Oh, okay, then you must be all set. <laughs> yeah. Get what? That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. But then you have to do the zip file, though, right? See, originally we started off. Uh, so here's here's what we're gonna do. You, you don't have to use git. Use this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just just get it in. So that's that's our double git. Okay. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you don't mind, if, you know, if you can pass it back to us later, okay. Is everybody able to git clone and git pull and all that? Yeah? And are you able to run the CF command? You know, if you want to follow along with the exercise, the top level exercise, not exercise one, you know, there is a alias for the staccato client which we're going to be using, and I'll talk about that. But if you can do the alias and, you know, just do a CF, minus minus version and make sure that the client is ready to go. Um, I think we, we will be ready to go then, okay? 
And I'm not going to give out the user ID and password until you know, I finish the demo, because I don't want people to be playing on their laptop. Okay? I'm just being a very rigid uh, teacher. Okay? So hopefully, it's all right. Uh, do you have a laptop, sir? Or? You're going to watch? I mean, you can pair up with some of these gentlemen or whatever. All right, that's fine. Yeah, you're welcome. You got it? All right. So, John. Good John. I think it's a good idea to get the. Anybody else having problems with Git? We don't technically need Git. Okay, so you can just use the thumb drive. All right. You have Git. I would prefer you use Git. If you have Git, you know, just go with it. Just Git clone. Go to the URL and just click the zip back. Download zip back. Oh, download zip. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do that. Too. Or you can use this. Just use this. Throw it. What, what, what happened? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, you can download a zip, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. But, but we kind of expected this, right? That's why we have the thumb drive. Where did all the thumb drives go? Oh, it's over there. OK, so just remember. So for those of you who are walking in late, you know you need a laptop here. If you don't have a laptop, you're welcome to stay. Uh, you know, we, I'm going to do like a 15, 20-minute demo. Okay, uh, but but I suggest you just kind of pair up with somebody else. I think there is definitely a lot of value, you know, to pair up with somebody else. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're just going to do a git clone of this particular URL. Okay, and and do a git pull. If you don't have Git installed, you don't want to install Git, you know, we have other ways of doing it, using a thumb drive. You know, but, but this is a lot easier. You know, so. And I'm hoping that you can you know, submit some pull requests later, right? Right, John? We can take some pull requests, right? Yeah. Anybody having problems with Git? Anybody needs a thumb drive? I just need them back later. Okay. These are really cool too. You know, these are bottle openers. You know, I use them more as a bottle opener than as a thumb drive. So if you guys have already done the git pull, I think you're ready to go. Okay, once once I let you lose after 15, 20 minutes, you know it, it'll take you probably about an hour to complete the exercises. Okay, at the max. That's what we're hoping anyway, right? So we'll see how it goes. Yes, thumb drive. You couldn't get git going. Actually, what you can do, yeah, yeah, just show yeah, that will be better. So what John is going to do is he's going to download the zip from the URL. So if you don't want to install the Git client, you can just download the zip file from the same uh, directory. Okay. Download zip. So if you click, if you click this button here, it'll download a zip for you, and it'll store it in your local. That's all. Okay. So that's the easiest way. Right. 
That works too, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what A lot of what people might not have the yeah. client installed. Is the yeah, if you don't have the client installed, you don't want to install the client for whatever reason, you can throw it up. Let's see if you can. Good throw. Good throw. Anybody who needs thumb drive, but you know, I think I like what John did. You know, basically go into the same URL and download the zip file if you need to. Or just do the git clone. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. The Wi Fi is actually not too bad here. You know, we'll see how it goes. Anybody having problems with the Git clone, Git pull, anything like that? And, and we're going to put our laptops down in about five minutes. Uh, I'm, I'm going to walk through for about 15 minutes, OK? And after that, you're on your own, OK? You can go at whatever pace you want. You know, there are a bunch of people helping us, OK? So we will walk around and kind of try to help you, OK? Yeah, so there's one over there. There's Phil, there's John, and Rags, OK? And the one over there is Troy. Sorry, Troy. Yeah, sorry. I didn't. I should have said that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Oh. Oh, left. Oh, well. sorry about How many of you have already it's used like Cloud Foundry it. before? <laughs> one, one person, two. Okay, that's this is exactly what we expected. So, so our exercises are pretty basic. Okay, uh, but but they are pretty useful because you know it's it's kind of a a real life scenario um, you know, that you would go through. Uh, it's not maybe a production app and all that. You, know, you cannot scale to thousands of instances. Actually, you could, some of them, right? Uh, but but you know, it will kind of give you a flavor of, of the application development lifecycle. Okay? Uh, come on in. Welcome. Come on in. So what you can do is you can either git clone this URL, or you can click the download zip, download the zip file, install it in your local directory, and you'll be ready to go. Okay. And by the way, this, these slides are also in the, in the Git directory, so you don't need to. Yeah, in the presentation, yeah, it's, it's in there, OK? So, so I don't need to do anything, really. So we're going to get started in like two minutes, three minutes, maybe. Yeah. So those of you who haven't been able to do the Git clone or, or download the zip file, or you know, do a git pull, you know, any of those, right? Just let us know. If you have a problem, just raise your hands. We are only like four or five people who are helping, so just be a little patient, okay? We'll try to help you out as much as possible. Come on in. We're about to get started. If you don't have a laptop, you know, just try to find somebody who might be nice enough to kind of share their screen with you, right? And I think peer, peer programming is strongly encouraged. Come on in. There's plenty of space here. Yeah. So for those of you who are walking in late, you know, just do a git clone of this. Or easier way is just download the zip. Visit the URL and download the zip. Or if you've already done a git clone, just do a git pull so that you're you know, refreshed.
Come on in. Plenty of space here. They have some tables here too, if you want to. You know? Yeah, there's power, things like that. And just because you're in the first row, you're not going to get picked on, OK? You're making it nervous? <laughs> yeah. I need the whip. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. All right, we're going to get started in two minutes because we really don't have too much time. For those of you who walked in here, you know, just do a git clone of this, okay? And and if you cannot get the URL, you know, just ask your neighbor. You know, they may be able to help you, okay? All right. So I'm going to get started. This URL is going to go away. Uh, if anybody wants it, let me know. I will. You need the URL? Couple of minutes. Okay. We can wait. Not for too long, though. All right, let's get started. Is that OK? Yeah? All right, cool. So good afternoon, and thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Raghavan Srinivas. I go by Rags, and my partner in crime is John Wetherill. Um, and basically, you are here for uh, the Cloud Foundry and OpenStack hands-on lab. Okay, so if you're not here for that particular hands-on lab, you know this may be a good time to leave. <laughs> okay, um, but but really appreciate uh, all of you coming. It's a beautiful day out in Vancouver, and if you haven't gone to Stanley Park, I strongly recommend. You know, you're going there even if it, if you have to miss the lab because you know it's a beautiful place, um, and I and I won't take offense really, um, but but you know, thank you for coming. Uh, we really have a very short amount of time, so I'm gonna uh, talk for about 15 minutes and then I'm gonna shut up, okay? And then you're gonna uh, work on the on the different exercises, okay? So you can go at your own pace. We have about eight exercises. Shouldn't take more than five minutes, okay? But but if you get stuck, sometimes it might take a little longer. So that's why we have given a little bit of room in there. Uh, we also are going to assign some homework, OK? So the homework is basically that you have to do the admin exercises later. We don't want all of you to do the admin exercises because you know you may kind of interfere with each other, right? So we don't want to do that. Um, but, but basically, you, know, you, can, you can go back home and, and try those exercises. So with that said, let me jump in. Uh, I think I already asked this question before. How many of you have already used Cloud Foundry before and pushed? At least one app. There are only three people, and you know, mainly in the front row. Okay. Um, question number two is: How many of you are kind of like developers? You know, who have written a lot of code. Okay. How many of you are kind of like operators? You know, never done development. Uh, like to get. Into, okay. Okay, and that's that's reasonable. Okay. How many of you are Java developers, by the way? Because I'm a Java developer. Okay. So we have exercises in Java, we have exercises in Python, we have exercises in Node. The instructions are mainly for the Java program, okay? But it works exactly the same way with Node and Python and all that, okay? So I will I will walk through the lab and John will actually show some pushing as well, um, and and you know hopefully you'll get an idea of how to do that. So if you have not put your laptop down, I advise you to close it down for 
just 15 minutes. Okay, and after that, you know, you can you can you can kind of go do whatever you want. Okay. Um, my name is Rags. I will keep the introduction short. But I really want to thank a lot of people in this room and a lot of people who are not in this room. I first want to thank Active State, you know, for really hosting everything. Um, you know, everything is hosted on Active State uh, somewhere. I don't know which data center. You know, it's somewhere in the cloud. Okay. Um, so it's uh, the Cloud Foundry instances are hosted by Active State. Um, there are a number of employees from Active State, um, John uh, included. Active State folks, can you please raise your hands? They're all here to help you guys and make this a really good experience. Okay? So, yeah, you know. And uh, second, I want to thank is Mirantis. Okay, they were very nice enough to give me an OpenStack uh, team instance. I don't know if you, anybody use uh, Mirantis OpenStack Express? Uh, I really, I really like it. I love it. You know, so so I'm going to demo Cloud Foundry running on OpenStack. Okay, and and uh, that's all thanks to Mirantis. Um, I want to thank Mirantis. I want to thank Kamesh Pemiraju, and I want to thank John Jansig. You know, Kamesh was the business development guy who helped me, and John was the technical guy who helped me. Okay, so obviously a lot of other people in Pivotal. Uh, who am I missing here? I think I got I got pretty it's much everybody. Yeah. Okay, but primarily thanks to you guys and Active State. Okay, all right, John, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Yeah. So my name's John Witherell. I'm as Rags just said. I'm from Active State, and uh, I've my career has been development. I recently discovered Platform as a Service about two and a half years ago, and it it gave me it was, it was like a life change. It it was like years of my life evaporated when I thought of how much time I could have saved with PaaS. So I called up Active State and I said, do you have any development jobs open? And they said, no, but we have an evangelist role. Do you want it? And I said, yes. So I'm, I, move, I move more into development of evangelism. Um, I won't spend any more time on myself. I do want to say, though, that I was, uh, I've been heavily involved with PaaS now for three years. And it is a, a movement that is just rapidly accelerating. And I'll just give the example is, um, three years ago, there was a Cloud Foundry Summit. 80 people showed up. Uh, sorry, that was uh, two years ago, 80 people showed up. Last year there was a Cloud Foundry Summit and there was 400 people. This year it was over 1,500 people just last week in Santa Clara. And the, they're, they're all anticipating that next year it's going to be as big or bigger than this conference. So the, the adoption and the movement of PaaS is just going out of control. So I, it's really good you know, that you're all here to see uh, PaaS in action. So. Absolutely, that's great. Yeah, and uh, and I want to reiterate what John said. You know, I got uh, absolutely sold on Cloud Foundry, and I'm not trying to sell Cloud Foundry at all. Uh, when I took my app, you know, it deployed it on Pivotal, took the same app, deployed it on IBM Bluemix, connected the services, and within one hour, the same app was running exactly the same way on Pivotal and on Bluemix. You know, it's it's a very pro powerful proposition both from an operator and developer perspective. Okay? And those, the, the apps could be running on completely different infrastructures without any, diff any additional work. So it could be on OpenStack here, CloudStack here, VMware here, AWS over there. You're not doing any work to move your app from infra to infra. OK. That said, there are only three things that we're going to go through here. Okay, And like I said, hopefully I'll shut up after 15 minutes. OK? Um, so how are things the same with uh, as, as probably all of you know, these are two of the biggest, I mean, fastest growing projects in the open source community as far as the cloud is concerned, right? Um, really, uh, OpenStack is probably the fastest growing, and Cloud Foundry is the next. You know, Docker might be close, you know, but, but at least it's on the first three, okay? Um, there are a lot of commonalities between two, a lot of synergy between the two. The license is the same. Um, it is a community, and it is technology, okay? It's both, okay? And that's what, it's vendor neutral, um, you know, and there are a lot of commonalities between the two, right? It's really API-based services and message passing, right? It's based on the, how many of you have read the OpenStack design tenets? Anybody read the OpenStack design tenets? Ooh, you should go read it, okay? It's based on the shared nothing architecture that Stonebreaker enunciated about 30 years back, okay? So essentially, the idea is that you really want to keep it as stateless as possible, right? And again, OpenStack and Cloud Foundry are primarily good for stateless applications. Doesn't mean you can't do stateful, uh, but but you know it's message passing, asynchronous, 
uh, and so on, completely distributed, and so on, and and uh, and that's kind of the commonality between the two. Okay. Um, the the infrastructure or, or the software itself, primarily OpenStack is on Python, but Cloud Foundry is kind of on Go and Ruby. Uh, I don't know if you heard of a new container, and I'll talk about that called Diego, uh, which essentially uh, was rewritten in Go, and that's why it's called Diego. Okay, and and we'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, how do you install it using Bosch? With OpenStack, really, you know, you can use any any tool that kind of suits your fancy. I mean, with Cloud Foundry, also you can install it with other, um, um, you know, um, uh, what do you say, other pieces of software, right? But Bosch is Bosch is primarily used for Cloud Foundry. Okay, um, IRC uh, mailing lists is primarily uh, the way you um, get your communication on Cloud Foundry. VCAP and VCAP Dev. Okay, if you go there, its traffic is not very intense, um, but but it's it's a lot of useful information out there. So John talked about the fact that you know he has been a developer. I have been a developer for about the same time as him, maybe longer, which is why I have more gray hair than him, right? Uh, because it it takes a lot of effort to kind of you know work on these different build packs, you know, these different languages, different services, uh, get your logs going, you scale it. Uh, make it highly available, you know, most of the enterprise capabilities, right? Uh, you want to be able to have a platform that essentially takes care of these uh, ingredients or these properties, right? And what you really would need to do is develop your business application, right? And automatically it runs on top of a number of different instances like VMware, OpenStack, AWS, dot, 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 okay? So there is something called as a Cloud provider interface, which essentially interfaces with this different uh, infrastructure as a service pieces. Okay, so very quickly, um, this is the runtime architecture. I'm not going to go through all of these, and I will I'll demo this quickly so you'll get an idea of this. But essentially, if you think of again the OpenStack architecture, where you have you know kind of the keystone at the front end, right, and then you have everything else, uh, you know, like a Nova, then you have like a Cinder, uh, and so on and so forth. Think of all of these as different pieces. And there is message passing going on between these different pieces, right? And all of these are different VMs. Um, and, and essentially, um, you know, it, it gets work done, right? Uh, UAA is kind of your, your keystone equivalent, if you will, okay? So you, authentication and authorization. But the heart of this is the DEA, okay, which is the droplet execution agent, okay? And we'll see what a droplet execution agent is in a moment, okay? Uh, again, running on multiple pieces of IaaS that I, uh, I really don't need to worry about. Bosch is used to install, and uh, essentially what it does is it creates the different VMs and injects an agent into each of the VM so that it can monitor the VM as it's running, okay? So the difference between like Chef, Puppet, and Bosch is that Chef and Puppet are good for installation, but they really don't do much at runtime, right? What Bosch does is actually it monitors if the VM is down, it will automatically resurrect the VM, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, okay? Uh, or actually demo that in a second. Um, if you're interested in why the bar, name Bosch, you know, talk to me later, but I really don't have the time for that, okay? So behind the scenes, this is how it looks. I have a deployment. I create a Bosch director that creates worker VMs, okay? And the worker VMs, in turn, create the different VMs, okay? So the NATS VM, the router VMs, the UAA VM, the DEA VMs, and so on and so forth, okay? And everything is running hunky-dory. If it's not, Bosch is keeping an eye on it. If it goes down, it's gonna spin it back up, okay? And how do I stage an application? I, all that I do is I take my whatever artifact it is. It could be a jar in the case of Java. It could be you know, something else in the case of Node. I, I really don't need to worry. I just take the artifact and I put it in. The build packs are going to recognize, um, you know, which kind of application it is. It's going to explode the artifact, and it's going to inject the appropriate runtime environment and create what is referred to as a droplet, which executes in the DEA. Okay, all of this, I don't need to worry. Okay, as a developer, as an operator, I don't really need to worry. I'm just giving you a little bit of a under the hood approach. Okay, and this is stored in the Blob store. Uh, how do I connect a service? Think of like a MySQL service, a Redis service, or a RabbitMQ service. There are a bunch of services, okay? It all works exactly the same way, right? Essentially, you have a service broker 
And that service broker is what you're going to use to kind of create your credentials. And once you create your credentials, they are cached so that you know, it works in a multi-tenant form. Okay? And you'll see that in action yourself. And if you actually look at the environment, okay, you will see something like this. Uh, can everybody see that from the back, or do you want me to blow it up a little bit? Uh, basically, it's a MySQL application, right? It's running on port 3306, right? What is the name? What is the username? What is the password? And that is kind of used you know, to connect to that MySQL service. Does that make sense? Okay. So I don't need to worry about any of these connections. I do it once. It's available for me. And you will see that in your hands-on lab. All right? How do I deploy Cloud Foundry in OpenStack? Very, very straightforward. Install MicroBosh. Deploy Bosch with MicroBosh. Deploy Cloud Foundry with Bosch. Okay? I have a blog. You know, if, you, if you Google it, you'll, you'll be able to find it. Okay? With this, okay, I will go straight into the hands-on lab. But before I do that, I'm going to show you the OpenStack instance running. Okay, and hopefully, uh, what did you do? Right. So this is my OpenStack, right? This is good. And if I just do a novel list, okay, you should be able to see all the VMs. Okay, this is exactly the same thing we're going to see in Horizon. Okay, so I'm going to go into Horizon, and uh, I'm going to put in the password. Okay, nobody don't nobody take a picture of this. Okay, All right. Too late. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. All right. So obviously, I <laughs> yeah, right. So I, I, I'm not a good operator here. OK. So, so these are the different instances which are running here. OK. Did everybody see this? OK. So what I can do is I can go back here and, and use my Bosch command to look at Bosch VMs. OK. So Bosch VMs will es essentially look through the VMs and list all the different instances. OK. Everybody with me? OK, so, so do you see the VMs there, you know, API, dot, 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 OK? I'm already running late here, right? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little bit evil here, OK? And I'm going to go, and I'm going to terminate this instance, OK? So what do you think is going to happen with this? Bosch is going to restart it, OK? Because it basically has a desired state and an actual state, OK? So if the actual state doesn't match the desired state, it's going to bring the stayed back to the desired state, OK? So we're not going to wait for that. So I'll go through the um, uh, exercises. Maybe we need a push here. Or Probably, what do we want to do? Think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do a push. Um, you know, he'll show you how to do the target, and he'll do a push uh, just to kind of give you an idea. And then, and then we'll, you know, we'll uh, uh, do the resources, and then we'll let you lose. OK? Yes, question. Yes, yes. So that's a great question, and and uh, there are a number of ways of doing this. One is you can look at the services, right, and you can you can hard code that you are. Yeah, correct. I haven't finished my answer though. Okay. So that is one way that is not recommended. Okay, but if you use like Spring Cloud or anything like that, essentially what it does is it allows you to query the environment, and and automatically builds the URL for you. Okay, if you use a Play application, it does something similar as well. <coughs> So you don't need to. Correct, but but it doesn't have to be because what with Spring Cloud, what you can do is you can say, am I deploying it locally? Am I deploying it on an application server? Am I deploying it on Cloud Foundry? In and it does all the automatic magic to make it happen. Okay. Yes. Correct. 
Correct, yeah. And there's yeah. another mechanism, too, that can be yeah. used that we, we have been using, which is the, uh, the PAS inspects your class hierarchy, looks for javax.jdbc.connection or whatever, and replaces those yeah. with, the, with the credentials for the. Yeah. So let's, let's table the Java discussion because there are not a yeah, lot of Java hard, developers here. You know, I want to be. So. Yeah, yeah. So okay. go ahead and let's push it. So yeah. just briefly, um, here's just a random application that's sitting up on GitHub. This is a Python application. I just thought I'd bring it up here. Um, it's got your standard things you would expect with a Python app, including this WSG. WSG.py, uh, just bring up a container that will display an application. So I have that on here. Um, and I have also uh, targeted a, um, a, uh, a Cloud Foundry instance out in the cloud. And uh, you see the, the IP address or the uh, host name IP address of it here. So this is targeting it here. So in order to push this application out to the cloud, I just say CF push dash n means don't prompt me. And it's going to take that application take the bits for that application, and push them up to the Cloud Foundry instance, which is then going to stage it, stage it into a container that it will then make available to run. And um, that's basically all that's involved. And many applications can be deployed to the paths to Cloud Foundry with, without any modification at all. It's not like you have to customize your application to support the paths. So yeah, and if you Foundry. look at the manifest.yaml, uh, you can connect to services there as well. So this application has been deployed. It should be ready to go. So if I now visit it in a browser, and here it is. It's a simple application. It, uh, you know, it's um, currency conversion. Yeah. Uh, and we oh, have yes. haven't connected to. Oh, so we didn't connect. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, we'll do yeah. that later. Um, right. We, we shouldn't disable that. Right. Um, almost tempted to. That's fine. Yeah. We'll show that. Right now. Show uh, the PCF demo. You know, like, yeah. yeah. Let me do this. It's yours. That's your demo. Yeah. Or we can do this uh, node n. Uh, when did you go and do this? Yeah, it's fine. It, yeah. We actually illustrated most of that there. So the application is up. It actually is a full three-tier application. It's connected to a Redis database underneath, which was provisioned by the PaaS as well. So there is, um, as I said, there's very little work involved to push that app out to the PaaS. Once it's out there, we now can e instantly and easily scale that application out and do a bunch of other enterprise-y related things that you would have to roll on your own if you're deploying these types of apps at a lower level in the infrastructure level. Right. So, so, so notice, you know, John did a CF push on the Node app and did the same CF push on the Python app, right? And actually, you can do the same CF push on IBM Bluemix, on RunPivotal.io, on your laptop instance, wherever, right? And that's the beauty of, uh, you know, of using Cloud Foundry, OK? So, so it shows here that this particular app is deployed. And you can go there and, and you can kind of take a look at that. Okay, so the same thing as before. Okay, so this is a different uh, Node uh, application, and and essentially it talks about you know what uh, port it's uh, you know it's running on you know things like that. You know you can get some details on that. With that said, uh, why don't we go back to the presentation, do the resources? Uh, anybody com completely confused about Cloud Foundry at this point? Yeah. Question? Yeah. How is it different from what? Mesos. Oh, Mesos. Mesos. Um, I don't know. Do you want to take that question? Uh, it's really Cloud Foundry is really a platform where you 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 know push your apps, scale, and and the platform automatically you know manages all of that for you. Okay. As a business developer or as a developer, I worry only about the business logic. The non-functional requirements like scalability, high availability, uh, service connectivity, all that, security, okay? All of that is taken care of by the platform, okay? You take an app developer perspective. As an app developer, I really want to just push and make it work, right? I don't want to terminate the instance. I don't want to worry about SSL termination. I don't want to worry about uh, how to connect my logs and all that. All that is done by the platform. So, okay. and I'd like to add a couple points here too, as well. So, a significant difference. This is a PaaS, so it's got the as a service thing at the end of its acronym. Yeah. So, a PaaS is meant to be as a service, self self service on demand. So, developers can access the PaaS to request resources, request data, you know, all the things they need. Um, it's also multi-tenant, which is a big differentiator between Mesos. So, you can have multiple teams, multiple corporations and enterprises sharing a single PaaS instance. So it's, it's higher level. And then it also provides a lot of features the, that um, 
you'd have to roll your own on using a, a lower level uh, orchestration system. There's a bunch of other differences as well. Good. I don't know if that helps. And Think also, the, uh, yeah, as a service is a, is a big, you know, how, how it works is the yeah. service. And also, if you're, um, you know, if you're thinking about a container kind of approach, there is a container in, uh, you know, in uh, Cloud Foundry, you know, that DEA, that's the container. It's based on, you know, the same LXC containers, C groups, and so on and so forth, okay? So the things you're, you're familiar with, uh, it's just that Garden actually predates uh, Docker, okay? All right, with that said, I'll go to the resources and summary. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this uh, slide, which is uh, pizza as a service, okay? So, you know, if you think about, you know, you having to do everything, then you basically have to do all of this yourself, right? Meaning, you know, you have to start from the dough, you know, knead it, make it happen, and then put the, you know, make the crust, then put the sauce. You know, who wants to deal with it on an everyday basis? You just pick up the phone and call Domino's or whoever that is, right? I don't know who is it in Canada. So that's the idea behind Cloud Foundry as well. You have everything, you know, available as, as kind of a menu. You pick the right one, you pick the service, you pick the language, you know, polyglot doesn't matter, um, you know, and, and you just, you know, push it. That's really the idea behind this, okay? So sign up for the CF and Bosch mailing lists. So install Cloud Foundry on OpenStack, blog out soon. Actually, blog is already out, okay? So you can take a look. Uh, learn how to write 12-factor apps. You know, if any of you haven't heard of 12-factor, you know, take a look at that. It's really good. And like I said, if you haven't looked at the OpenStack design tenets, you know, I strongly recommend you take a look. Uh, there are free workshops and roadshows. Might be very close to where you are, okay? Uh, take a look at that. And um, Cloud Foundry After Dark. Anybody attended any of these events, Cloud Foundry After Dark? You've gone there? Okay. I, I, I try to do it every time, but I live on the west, you know, east coast, and it happens at 9 o'clock p.m. on a Sunday, okay? So if, if you're insomniac and you can't sleep, I strongly recommend this, okay? Uh, actually, it's, it's a lot of interesting discussions. Um, we strongly recommend that you try multiple instances, although we have a cloud available and ready for you to go, okay? So that's what we're going to be doing in the next uh, one hour, okay? But you can push it to really any cloud that you want, okay? Any of these and more, okay? And, and really, you know, um, as simple as just doing a CF push. Okay, with that said, what I'm going to do here is we are going to do what is called as the credential ceremony, okay? So you're going to start with 110, okay? And you're going to, yeah, just hold on one second. 110, 111, like that, okay? Just, just give out a number, okay? And that's the number you're going to be using, user 110, user 111, okay? And same password, all right? As simple as that. You're going to use the CF target, okay? So the user ID is going to be, everybody get that? If he said 110, it's user 110. 111, 112, and so on and so forth, okay? So we have created about 200 users, so we should be fine with that. Is, that, is everybody with us? Okay, go. Loudly, please. No, 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 30. 35. 135. All right. We Remember know your number. <laughs> we know how to count. This is good. <laughs> Anybody doesn't have a number? Okay, you don't. You don't matter. <laughs> All right. So again, uh, those who are here to help out, please raise your hands. Okay. So you know, just just you know, be patient. You know, if you have a problem, just raise your hand, and we'll 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 uh, walk to you. Okay. Uh, just try the CF target and do the CF login with your user ID and password. And if you have a problem, let us know right away, okay? Because that's one thing we need to fix right away, okay? Yes, question. 
it it is in the in the staccato uh, basically it's minus something skip, skip ssl, SSL validation. validation yeah okay the password is the same. Correct. Yes. Uh, the CF is in your exercises. If you, if you, if you've already look look at the exercise and and you'll see. You know, if you look at the top level exercise, you'll you'll be able to download the staccato CLI. We are using the staccato CLI, but we're aliasing staccato to CF. Okay, so it just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, in the readme.md, OK? So this might, uh, how many people here have not got the CF command available right now? Right now, yeah. Just so we can uh, get it. OK, that's look. not it's too many. Okay. So yeah. uh, the, the helpers in the room will help you set that up if right. you have any issues. So if you go to the first readme.md, you have to download the staccato CLI, OK? And, and then you can create an alias for staccato CLI, OK? So essentially, what you need is a CLI, and, and then you have a server. Okay, this is the server, and you have a CLI uh, on your laptop. You have a problem? Your screen. You okay? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Do you have it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you need the latest one. So. MC Kerr. Oh, I, I did download it already. Did you download it? Yeah, I already downloaded it. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> okay, where is it? <laughs> they look like markdown documents. <laughs> hey, what? Okay. This is off topic, but what do you use for markdown? Right, right, right. right. But that's not what I'm looking for. Did you download the staccato client? Oh, uh, no. I think yeah, yeah, you need to. So you need to follow these instructions here. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just follow the instructions. No, no, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> Post colon, yeah. <laughs> Troy. Yeah, Fine. so yes. what yes. Active State yes. would have probably done, I'm not sure what they did, um, but essentially, oh, yeah, 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 used yeah. an instance okay. of okay. No, it's the Cloud Foundry, yeah. open, store, open Cloud Foundry, and added yeah. it on. Good, stuff. awesome. Yeah. Kind of exact same thing, uh, same, same idea. Works, yeah, too. yeah. yeah. Okay. So if we can, I guess it works for some things. I don't know how much you tested. Anybody not able to log in, please let me know. That's great. Okay, anybody pushed already? Phil will get you. Staccato client. Good. Okay, it's in this directory. I renamed it to CF. Is that what I need that, to do? That should probably work. As long as you can um, access it in your path so that when yeah. you type it in the shell. Yeah, I need to see if the edge column. It's looking for edge column. I don't Whoa. Know what it's I haven't at. seen that. That is odd.
is what happens when you push, you know, what all does it install and all that. Yes, sorry. Man, can you make your font any smaller? I can't read it all. <laughs> Is that working out for you? Yep. Just making my time pushing it along. Good. Okay. Yeah. I've got the console up there that's that's showing uh, uh, just all the apps that everybody's been pushing out. So it's actually working out okay. I wasn't sure. This is, <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to work out, but it seems to be doing okay. So it's totally multi-tenant. So every user here has got their own space, their own org. So you can't damage his stuff, and he can't damage yours. It's very it's isolated and protected. So. So to the point that you know some companies will share the same paths, right? Presumably it's not you know not competitors like Visa and, and Wells Fargo or something. They probably wouldn't, but. Uh,
So while everybody's uh, still plugging away, I just want to make a couple of comments that are relevant here. I want to, I, I didn't make it clear earlier, I don't think Rags did either. These, uh, these, this PaaS you're running, this Cloud Foundry PaaS is running on HP Open, OpenStack. So it is, this is a total OpenStack distribution. And here's Horizon, if you look here, you can see um, a number of the nodes, the VMs that comprise the PaaS. And I'm gonna jump to another screen here which uh, this is the, uh, the, uh, the web console for, cloud, for our Cloud Foundry Staccato. And you can, in this, you can look at the nodes that comprise the path. So you can see there's 15 nodes here. And the ones that are tagged with DEA, as Rag mentioned, Rags mentioned, that's a droplet execution agent. Those are VMs that are responsible for running the containers that run your application. And um, so I just want to make it clear, because it might not have been clear before, this is a total OpenStack installation, and it so far seems to be uh, working very well. Well, I'm going to do this, Regs. And if you're if you're totally done and you'd like something to look at, um, Regs is going to kill me. But we do have this web console which you can use just to look at some of the other functionalities of the PaaS of of Cloud Foundry. You can log in using your same username, and uh, you can you can basically browse your applications, start and stop them, look at the environment, look at the uh, history. A whole bunch of other things. So if you're just if you finish the exercise, I recommend you just log into this URI here and have a look around. And basically, it's just API dot that host name that you had accessed earlier. Absolutely. Grab a hockey puck too.
So we have exactly five minutes left. Um, you know, don't feel too pressured. You know, uh, what we can do is we have to let these nice folks leave, right? So we can go out and, and kind of do it outside, okay? If, if you're not completed the exercises. Okay, I'll be here for as long as you want, all right? Um, how many of you have completed all the exercises or close to it? Or, yeah, okay, cool, very cool. <laughs>